Okay, in this video, we're going to be making a little router table. Okay, so I use a router a lot in my day-to-day -day kind of carpentry. And I use this cordless one more than anything, actually. Um, it's become my go-to router. Um, the only downside is it is quite heavy, uh, kind of with the weight on the top. And one thing I do use this for all the time is for rounding over. And I've decided that it'd probably be easier if I had a dedicated router just for rounding over. Because it's something I do all the time. I hate changing the bit. Um, so I've bought myself an electric one, um, which I can put the round over bit in. And I've also bought myself a no volt release switch. And I'm going to make myself a little dedicated router table purely for using a round over bit. Um, I've got a few prerequisites. Uh, I want it to be the same size as a sustainer, so it's easy to put away uh, in my drawers. I want it to have really good dust collection, so I want it to connect up to my big extractor with the four inch hose. And um, I want it to be relatively mobile and be able to use with the cordless one should I choose. Um, the Novot release switch is there, so I've got an emergency stop that I can hit rather than having to fumble underneath um, to turn it on and off. And um, it needs to be able to come up to a, a workbench as well. So other than that, I think that's my, my main uh, targets to aim for. So I'm going to go for that and see how I get on. Okay, to build it, I have built myself a bit of a prototype out of some scrap pieces of ply. Um, but I've also got some, some much nicer ply, some birch plywood, um, kept under lock and key. Uh, this, I was building some kitchen units uh, a few weeks back, so this is from uh, just one bit of leftover from that. So I think the top and bottom would be built out of three quarter, 18 mil ply, uh, birch plywood, which is really nice. Uh, no voids, perfect for this kind of thing. It'd be nice if I had like, um, can't remember the stuff, what the stuff's called now, the stuff you use for trailer beds, so that's really good. Um, you know, slippy if I had some of that, but I'm not going to buy a sheet especially for it. So I'm going to use 18 mil top and bottom. And then for the dividers, I'm going to use some nine mil birch ply, which I've also got left over. I tend to use when I'm doing my, um, if I'm making kitchen units and drawers and stuff, I tend to use nine mil in the bottoms of the drawers. Just makes them feel a bit more solid. I hate quarter inch ply in there when it kind of flexes. I think there's nothing worse. So um, got a few bits of scraps and offcuts. So hopefully make something useful. Um, it is nice to use nice wood, but it's something you're going to use all the time. I built this this pork workbench. I uh, built that with birch ply before the price uh, doubled. Um, just before, I bought, built this just before COVID, and um, but it is something I use every day, so it is really nice to have nice things. Same goes for my, you know, people quite often criticise. I, can, I can't move out of the way at the moment. Criticise my um, my workbench because I've carved it. But actually, it's, that's kind of nice that uh, I get to use that all the time and get to surround myself with nicer things. Uh, I'm in here most of the time, so it is quite nice to have it uh, how I want it. So I'm going to cut these up, uh, this birch ply, into some squares, the same size as the top and bottom of a sustainer. And then I'm going to start routing some grooves in it um, to take the 9mm ply and be able to glue and kind of sandwich it all together. And then once we've done that, we can make a little door for the front. Um, Oh no, actually first we're going to cut the insert for the top as well um, and make sure that the, the little, I just bought a generic uh, aluminium insert off eBay, I think it's about 15 quid, but aluminium, it's got the right holes for the base and uh, it's got some holes there you can fix down in the corners as well, which, so we might use some machine, countersunk machine screws and bolt it or to be honest with you, it probably just slot in, it'd probably be fine for what we're doing and we'll be able to lift it out when we want to then. Um, Cool, so let's get this cut up with the track saw and uh, see how we go. Try not to advocate, advocate buying loads of kit, but a rail square is really handy for this kind of thing. So I can put that on there, trim the uh, trim the waste off, and uh, I know it's going to be square off this line. And I can square it back round. It's really accurate. Uh, works really well. And I've got quite a few accessories uh, like that as well.
these two perfectly the same. So I've got two bits of 18mm ply there. That's probably enough money to put my kid through college if I was to buy it for this especially. Right, now I've got this little aluminium plate, which I quite like. There is a little slot there for a fence, but we won't be using that. So what I need to do is make a router jig that will uh, route this out so it slots in nicely into the 18mm ply. That's about 9mm thick. So we go halfway in. So what I have done uh, on this router, if I take this bit off, well, actually, I'll take it off leaving it on. I have got a base plate. So I normally use a bigger router for this, but I actually bought this base plate so that I can fit these rings into it. So you measure the offset from the bit to the outside of there, which is 11 mil on this one. I've got a, 20, a 32 mil ring and a nine mil bit. 11 mil, nine and a half mil bit. And then I made, in a blue Peter Styley, a template for it. So I cut this out, I used the chop saw and then connected up the corners. Uh, so I made this 22 mil bigger than what this is. And uh, I've tested it and it fits really nicely. The only thing it doesn't do, which I should have done, is the corners. So what I'm going to do is when I route it out, I'm going to miss the corners. And then I'm going to route it out to depth. I'm going to set it in slightly. I'm going to cut that middle bit out with the jigsaw. Then I'm going to go back and I think it was a, when I did a test one, it was a number six, 14mm uh, carving gouge was the perfect for the corners. And I'll just draw it round, corner it out, chisel it out. It should fit nicely then. It's not the end of the world if it has little gaps, but I'd rather it was nice and tight. So I'm going to clamp this into the middle of one of these pieces now, which will become the top. And then when I that's on there, I can wrap round it and we can uh, drop our router in and we'll be somewhere near starting it. And then I'll flip them both over and then we're going to groove them all to make it so that they can connect up nicely. Cool. Let's get on it. Okay, so I want some, a centre line on here. So this has got the centre marked on the on the jig. So I need some cross lines. So let's just find the centre of this whole piece. Put the mark there. And the mark there. That is the centre. And then we'll get my nice big jumbo sail square. I'm going to put some marks just lightly and know them where we're going with the jig, hopefully. Right, put that on there. We will now, we don't need to fit those. So we'll put those on there. And what we'll do is we'll clamp it down. With a couple of F clamps. That's why I love this style of workbench. Wherever you are, there's somewhere to clamp it. So I've got that there. Are now my enemies Always tell you what to do Can't keep up with all the bullshit they're throwing your way Always looking for the easy way Now they're walking over you Unfortunately, because the way there's a structure designed on this, it really stops me from seeing what I'm doing. So just to get into the corners now, I'm going to do it without dust extraction. We'll just have the hose up here, actually. And just go a bit nearer into the corners. So all I've got to do is trim it out. And then this 9mm line is then perfect for me to cut round with the jigsaw and drop out.
Okay, well done now. <coughs> Marked up for all the dados and grooves I want in the uh, ply on both pieces. And there'll be a mirror image of each other. Let's go on the back, except one hasn't got a hole in, obviously. And then what I'll use to do it, I'm going to use the guide rail, which I'll clamp down. And then I've got this nifty little base. Um, there's lots of these on the market. That kind of goes up and down the guide rail. I know that the offset from the router cutter to the edge there is 45 mil. So I'll just mark up all my offsets, make sure it's clamped down nicely so nothing can move, and then just run the router up for the nine mils. And there's a couple of 18 mil slots for the front bits, um, which are going to hold like the Novot release switch. Um, and for that, I'll just run it twice. I have got an 18 mil cutter here, but it does struggle a bit through uh, this birch ply. It's quite dense stuff. Yeah, I've got an 18 mil cutter there, but for a half inch shank, so it's not much, not much good really for what I'm doing. So better off to stick with a nine mil cutter and a little router. I have got a bigger router I could do this with, but it's hardly worth it. So I'm gonna groove these now, and then I'll start cutting the other pieces. bits cut and then that should mean if I've done it right they will mirror up like that so now we need to cut the pieces for there there and there so just simple with the track saw okay so I cut all the pieces to go in the table if you see that so adjust it down a fraction right so these bits will go like this, and then the top piece will slot on. As you can see, it goes together quite nicely. What we will do is probably put some battens at the back, some little squares, rather than routing it into the 9mm. Try and keep the weight down a little bit. So, that's dead simple like that. And actually, we'd have a little basic route table if I drop the top on there now, like that. But what I'm going to do is on this piece, I'm going to cut it to take this Nova release switch, which is a big uh, thing for me. If I'm having anything mounted, I want to be able to turn it off quickly. So I've marked out to cut out the back of that. And then on this piece here, I've cut, I've drawn out now, you can see, circle there for an extractor. And actually I have got a little plastic hose thing which will go over that. But it is just big enough if I want to uh, just push the pipe through it. And then I've got a hole there uh, with a divot on the bottom and that'll be for the plug to go through. And then on the inside, I'll just have a little swingy bit of ply on a screw, um, which will cover it off for when the, uh, the suction's on there. So I cut those out and then we can get these bits glued up. So it wants to be like that, so I'm going to drill a couple of holes 
in the back and then I'm going to use some coach bolts, washers somewhere, oh, washers are there, and some wing nuts, and that'll hold it on nicely. Okay, so I've done a little dry run putting it together. Unfortunately, I probably should have brought that one in a little bit more. The cable's going to be okay in my drawers, but it does just fetch it out a little tiny bit on the sides. Um, what I've also done is I've got it all squared now, so I'm going to run a couple of lines on the inside against the back before we do it together. And what I'm going to do is get some kind of inch by inch at the back there, just to give it, and I'll screw from the outside onto both. And that'll just give it a little bit more rigidity. Although, even I think when that's glued up, that'll be pretty solid. So we'll do this. And then we can look at maybe making a little bit of storage on this side. But the idea of this now is it gives us space to have a fence or something on the back. And be able to clamp it with just clamps if we wanted to. Um, but what... This is kind of usable now if we glue this together. What I want to do is make a door there, maybe with a little bit of perspex in so I can see what's going on. And um, yeah, we're nearly there. So I'm going to put those on, glue it all up, leave this to go off, and I can start working on the other bits and pieces. Cool. Okay, let's glue it up. Let's see what it looks like. Put some screws in the back now and then I'll probably clamp it down to the bench, let the glue go off. Stye key screw, hope for the best. And this is gluing it together, I've got quite a few clamps on there just to try and uh, get it to go off nicely. Okay, messing around trying to figure out a door of some description. So I have cut a piece of perspex on the band saw. And it cut pretty good. Now I know you're meant to polish the edges, but I haven't done that yet. Let's pop this clip in. I've had this kicking around for ages. So what I was thinking, let's have this in here like that. So I'm just going to put a block at the top, block at the bottom, and maybe a coach bolt and a wing nut into them. I'm not sure really. Okay, this is how much thinking has gone into this router table. I had to sit down to think about it. So, I wanted a door, but I figured if I hinged it, then when my hand went in and out, it'd catch on the hinges and stuff. Also, didn't want to bother making the frame and things, so I cut a piece of perspex about the right size, fits in nice. And then what I've done is I've made a slot at the front here, just two pieces of wood. Um, one of them I've done birch ply on edge, so it looks like the same as what's below it, and that just needs gluing on. Made a little handle on top of the um, piece of perspex there, just a hole and a screw for it. And that pushes back against the stop on the inside. And I've got a piece of dowel here, and what I'm going to do is drill a hole through there, through there, and I'm going to make a little peg on the end, a little twist, and I'll be able to pull it out. And that just goes through and just holds the door in place. If you want to see what's going on then, um, easy to take off. I know it's uh, it's not quite as easy as having it hinged, but uh, I think that'll work really well. Okay, on this side, we've got this uh, bit of a gap here. So all I've done is get a bit of 18mm ply, about 40mm thick. And then that will 
I've drilled some 6.5 mil holes in there, quarter inch ish. If I just glue that in there, and then that'll be for some extra bit storage should we want it. And then last thing I think is to put a couple of hooks for my spanners there and there. But I don't know whether to paint the front of this or what. I've got to sand it up now um, once this glue's gone off and then we're pretty much there. Okay, so she's all made up. What we're gonna do now, you see the router fits lovely. Got the dust port. I've taken off the no volt release switch. I'm just about to take this off. Take the router out. I'm gonna give it all the coat of oil. I've got a, an old cotton rag here. I'm just gonna give it some Danish oil, I think. Um, just all over it, one or two coats. And then it'll be ready to go. The, you can see the door works as well. A little lever. Need to put a bevel on the one side actually, make it a bit easier to go in there. Oh, quite pleased with that. That's quite cool. It just pulls out like that. Whoop. Okay, so I'm super pleased with this router table. It's just what I wanted. It's taken a bit of uh, head scratching to sort a few things out. So, as you can see, I've got, got a fence on there because it's just going to be used for rounding over. And the idea is when I build a workbench over there, another one, this is going to slot in to the workbench. So it'll be at this height. Although I can actually clamp it at that height if I'm doing a lot of work anyway, using some F, F clamps. Good advantage of the, uh, the pork bench. Gives you lots of places to clamp it. I can also clamp it down to the bench using uh, the MFT top here. So I've got the no bolt release switch, like I said, got a big dust port there. The only thing is, in fact, it might be a little bit too good on dust extraction at the moment. I might add in a couple of holes on the door, um, should I choose to. This side, got router bit storage. I could put another one in there, but to be honest with you, I'm only gonna use a few bearing guided bits in this. Probably just keep a round over of two different sizes and a chamfer bit with it. And then the rest can go with the rest of my router bits. Got this cool door as well, oh, I think it's cool. So just pull the button out, that comes off. Then you've got access to your router. Got plenty of space in there to kind of lift it. You can adjust it and lock it off. Get it nice and flush and ready to go. So I'll give this a bit of a, a, bit of a spin now, try it out, round over a few little bits and pieces. And the other advantage is it fits with all my sustainers and other Thanos toolboxes. So it will go in my little bank of toolboxes there uh, and just tuck away quite nicely. So yeah, nice little project. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased I built it. this to the end thank you very much a uh, bit of my thought process of making something like this if you want the plans for it it is in woodworking crafts issue 77 when that comes out um, please click the thumbs up like subscribe and uh, share it with your friends thank you for watching okay so she's all made up now so now we're going to oh we fell down um, we um, you know, last time we got 14 caterpillars. Mm -hmm. Now, this time we have 14. What? Yep. That's a lot of caterpillars. And we, we found all of them in your garden. Oh dear. They're eating my veggies. And there are some weeds. That's not so bad. Yeah, and one of them is called... Um, I, I've already named one of them. It's called Massive because it's massive. <laughs> um, like it's. Let me show. I'm sure it's that. That is that long. That thick. What? That sounds like a monster caterpillar. 